Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And over this fall season, my wife and I are traveling to our four children's homes to visit with our children and our grandchildren. And I'm the grandpa that shows up with a 3D printer. This is the second Ender 3 Pro that I've delivered. I've also delivered a Quiddy XSmart printer. And I deliver these for very selfish reasons. I want to be able to spend time in different locations. My children and our in four cities around the world, um, and yet I still want to stay connected to my YouTube viewers. So I want to make sure even when I'm traveling, I periodically post videos. One of the challenges that people have with an Ender printer, with the exception of the Ender 5 Plus that has auto bed leveling, is that the print surfaces seem to be imperfect, not perfectly, perfectly flat. And often they have a little dip in the middle, or perhaps a little high spot in the middle, but more often a little dip in the middle. This problem is exacerbated by the fact that the new print surfaces that go on top of the physical bed are flexible. And so if you have a dip in the middle, this is going to dip. So we're going to look at how to solve this printer. We're going to review how to quickly level your printer, even if you do not find a bed leveling, auto bed leveling option in your console. And this will make it much easier for you to produce satisfactory, really better quality prints. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. One of the problems that people with Ender printers are facing is that the print surfaces are not always perfectly flat. In order to determine if your print surface is flat, I recommend taking off your magnetic print bed and getting a metal ruler. No, you can't probably use a plastic ruler. It might work, or a wooden ruler, but I think you need a metal ruler. They're not very expensive. You put the metal ruler diagonally across the print surface, and then you look underneath and see if you see light at any point. If you see light in the middle, the bed is dipped. If you see light on the ends, the dip bed comes up in the middle. And you should try that in both directions. In my particular case, this print bed has a slight dip in the middle. So if I level this print bed on the four corners, when I go to do my first print, it's not going to stick because the middle is too low. What I found for this printer is that a single post-it note put on the middle of the print bed will solve the problem. Now why? You might think that creates a lip, but it doesn't because the magnetic print surface is flexible and it will flex to even that out. Then you can check again with your ruler and see if you can see light in the middle. In this case, it ended up pretty darn flat in both directions, but you may need to use more than one post-it note. Now, after you have that post-it note in place, I'll show you the procedure that I recommend for leveling the print surface. And I recommend this even if you have one of the Ender printers uh, that ships with firmware that has an option called auto bed leveling. Unless it's the plus model, that's really a misnomer. All it's doing is moving the print head to the four corners and into the middle for you. So you can do that yourself. Here are the steps you need to take. First, your printer should be powered off. In fact, I normally unplug it just to make sure it's not powered on. Second, don't worry, when you go to move this print bed, you may see your LCD panel flash. Don't worry, it's not a problem. The reason that's happening is a stepper motor is a DC motor. DC motors, when you apply power, spin. When you spin them without power, they generate electricity. So it's generating a little electricity, causing the LCD to start to come on. Don't worry about that. So what I like to do is move the print head to about an inch in from each edge. And then here's the next thing you need to understand about these printers. When the Ender printer needs to determine the bottom position, the home position for the Z axis, it uses a little micro switch. Now I'm going to click this. The reason you see this microphone in the view here is I want to make sure it picks up this sound. So listen. That's a very important sound. The reason it's a very important sound is that you can manually lower by turning the Z rod, the screw rod, counterclockwise 
the Z axis. And when you get to that switch, you'll hear it click. When you just hear it click, that's the home position. That's the position you should use for checking to see if your bed is level. Now, your bed has springs under it, so you can push down on it slightly, slide a post-it note in. Once again, I'm a big fan of post-it notes as a 3D printing tool. And see if it just slides around a little bit, but with a lot of friction. This bed was previously leveled, so it's pretty darn close. So now I'm going to slide the print head over to the other side, pressing down on the bed, slide a post-it note underneath. That one's pretty good too. Try this corner, that one's pretty good. Slide it back to the other corner and try the, ah, that one's maybe a little tight. So I want to pull the bed down. To do that, I want to compress the spring. So if I turn the screw counterclockwise, it will compress the spring some more, pull the bed down. Now it's too loose, so I'm going to turn it back a little bit. And that's just about right. And so now, let's check the center. And that's pretty darn good. So now that we have the bed level, we can power it up and proceed with our print. One of the nice things about the newer Ender 3 printers is that when you're doing a calibration print, perhaps just boxes, and you're watching to see if it's sticking and whether you can rub it off as you're printing it, you can actually turn these screws during the print. Now, you wouldn't want to do that during a production print because you might mess up the print a little bit, but these are so easy to get to, you can do that while you're printing. So I'm going to power on this printer, and uh, we're going to do a calibration print Okay, our calibration print is well underway. On the outside, it printed a skirt. That is, in essence, another calibration area you can check. for. You should rub on it to see if it'll rub off. You'll see the interior lines. You should feel that they are raised. If those lines do not show up at all, your nozzle is too low. If they rub off when you rub with your finger, your lot nozzle is too high. So in this case, they seem pretty darn good. Okay, I'm going to pause the print now because we've printed sufficiently to get a good sense of this. I'm going to turn off the printer and we'll wait for it to power down. It will take a moment. Then I'm going to manually move the print head up. I find that easier than uh, doing it with the front panel. We'll take our print surface off. And you can see here we have a very nicely printed calibration grid and none of the lines will rub off at all, yet they are all raised above the surface. So this is a perfectly calibrated printer, thanks to one post-it note in the middle. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. More importantly, I think a great way for other people to benefit from this channel is if you share the channel with people. So share the URL for the video with anyone you know that might be interested. Feel free to share any of my videos in any user groups or forums. Thanks so much for watching, and let's continue to learn things together.